Welcome back to the Red River Horror Podcast. This is episode number 43. I am your host, Joe Zakreski, joined by RedRiverHorror.com founder, Eddie Kayazo. Hi, Ed. How are you? Joe, doing well. Great to be back. Thanks for uh, thanks for taking the wheel last week also. Um, and congratulations on your wedding, man. Oh, thanks, bud. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we had some, we had some a crazy last, like eight weeks i guess last like two months you know between you having the baby me getting married and yeah all the thing that comes along with it but hey we're here we're still going strong we are less than 10 away from our one year our wow. one year ep, one year anniversary which is pretty you know pretty exciting is that episode 52 52 weeks right or yeah that, yeah or would it technically be 53 to be the year i don't remember I don't do numbers no, on air. It's <laughs> gotta be fifty. You hit that mark and you yeah. ride. You just you just grab it by the haunches and hump, hump it, it into, into submission. submission. <laughs> <laughs> so. No, but it's great to be it's great to be back and uh, great hearing about Robert the Doll last week. And yeah. uh, I'm I'm excited for this week's because we put the the uh, the little the little exclamation point on uh our, our saw which was talk. so so much fun to do and it's a shame that it's like we was too busy to give it more promotion than it deserves speaking of promotion if you need 10 percent off of your order at keystoneretro.com use code red river that is 10 percent off if you visit keystoneretro.com using red river mm-hmm. anyway back to, <laughs> back to <laughs> prom- promoting you know it's a shame just because we were busy anybody who checked that out i mean i hope if you're a saw fan you checked it out um, I've, cause you know, I forgot to give a little shout out to Wally cause I read his list that he gave me and I'm thinking about that list right now because that was a list of all the Saw movies and we are going to be finally talking about Spiral. Cha-ching. Yeah. So, um, right off the bat because it's very fresh on the brain that would go probably right up on that list to number two. No, no, wow, to number two. <laughs> yeah, I liked for it. For you. I liked it a lot. Oh, my gosh. That's a whopper to start, man. Uh, yeah. Great I'm, start. Let's just come out swinging. Okay, let's do it. So number two, I, I <laughs> we just said number two. That's pretty funny, <laughs> actually. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I, I will first give, just because it's fresh on my brain, wow, mm-hmm. I am a huge movie theater fan. It's great to be back. This was the first film I saw back in. In movie theaters, you and I just too. Yeah. We, we we just saw it, and the reason we were uh, quick disclaimer: the reason we're doing this uh, for another Thursday release as opposed to our Monday is because now Spiral has had some time to breathe, mm-hmm. and we are going to spoil the crap out of this film. Yeah, so you have been warned. You can yeah. stop right now, and then sleep on it, and then come back. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. uh, so because it's fresh on my brain, uh, great to be back in the movie theater, but I completely forgot that people just don't shut the hell up in movie theaters yeah especially like uh younger people yeah so those are definitely like a there's like a group of probably like somewhere between maybe like 19 yeah 18 i guess they have to be over 17 yeah <laughs> i mean i doubt they care like do they even care about that in movies anymore i mean i'm sure they kind of do but whatever it doesn't you know yeah but the talking i yeah. forgot because it was always your rule because you know me i always got super excited i'm like oh we gotta see it we gotta see it. you're like hey 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 hey. as Time. we got older wait wait we will see it let them get their first friday saturday and maybe even the second in mm-hmm. and then we will go at some point during the week and that was always sound advice yeah i mean that's that's just how i like it and it's like i've said it on this show where i i said i'd be okay not even going but, you know, even like getting there, there's still like some kind of nostalgia to it where it's like, oh, you know what? I mean, if it's the right thing, it's, you know, I'll still go. Yep. And I saw I actually snapped a picture of the poster. We mm-hmm. were in a, in, in a movie theater. So we'll post that on Instagram at Red River Horror. But you're right. It was. Well, what I saw on the poster was they actually you could see Spiral in IMAX. Yeah. And if you haven't seen it yet well we're gonna spoil it one but two maybe check that out in imax i mean with with the uh, contraptions and the the death traps and all that fun stuff it, 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 it i think most, that could be a good imax film most definitely absolutely yeah for some of those kills and just some of like the uh imagery 
scenery i don't know yeah yeah um so where 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 do we even begin with this let's uh let's just start with i mean why i'll tell you why i liked it so much is i really like the pace okay um yeah it did it did go right in i know you like the the quick start but it didn't really stop right and it 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 didn't try to do what uh later saw sequels did where it was just like okay here comes 10 minutes now we need a machine 10 minutes need a machine and even in like those later ones it seemed like they're just making up excuses just to have machines that didn't fit the storyline anymore yeah and whereas this um goes back to where the original kind of like the brilliance of the original comes from where it just like sets that pace there's not too many traps i mean i guess every trap in all of them is going to be a little over the top but still like everything the way it all tied together was just a chef's kiss <laughs> no no I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it uh it did move quickly the, the contraptions were not over the top in the sense that we didn't get them back to back to back to back. There was there was a story being told. Right. And we kind of had to live through that until it's just like, all right, who's going to who's going to go next? Mm-hmm. Um, I thought Chris Rock did a really, really good job at first. I was like, hmm, I, I can see it because I like Chris Rock a lot as a comedian mm-hmm. and an actor as a comedic actor. I thought he was the perfect balance for this his his excitement like the what he brings to the screen uh what i mean is uh, if we had gone super suit cop like yeah like old school by the book you know (laughs) the caricature of the police officer Mm -hmm. i don't know if that would have worked i think we needed a character like chris rock was able to portray yeah to be brought into this story specifically yeah and you know when the way he's introduced is more in a traditional way that you would expect to see chris rock yeah right right. and then (laughs) as the movie progresses like he gets to kind of show a little more of uh, a different side of what chris rock can do yes and he and he doesn't do a bad job either oh not at all uh and like you know (laughs) the bonus points of them getting sam jackson to sign on to play his dad you know, if you hear a movie, it's it's like, oh, it's going to be Chris Rock and Sam Jackson's going to be playing his dad. You are not expecting this. No, no. no. But and it seems, like, by the way, all those previews, a couple were Lionsgate uh, distributed, right? Yeah. It seems like Lionsgate has has uh, a good relationship with Samuel L. Jackson right now. He was in, I think, <laughs> three trailers. Yeah. Before the movie he was in. Yep. Like, I think the only one he wasn't in was The Conjuring. Uh, Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Which, which is probably going to be our next uh, lead up. That's a good point. <laughs> that's probably yeah. our next. That's probably. It's We're like, talking oh, this new the end movies. Of this. It's like, oh, it's going to. Hey, that new Conjuring does look good. But we'll 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 dig into that. So, yeah, I just wanted to give the writers no, credit no. from the IMDb page. Josh Stolberg, Pete Goldfinger. Um, they were the writers of the film and I don't want to get this wrong and I haven't looked it up since we last spoke, but directed by Darren Lynn Boozman. Yes. And if it's Bowsman, I apologize, man. We'll get you on the show soon to talk about it. I may be butchering your name. I'm just going to say Boozman for now, if that's cool. I think if we they told him how people, if we showed him our last names and asked him to pronounce it, I think he'd be okay with it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so he I think did, that's fair. But he was brought back as director. And honestly, I think I said this, Joe, when you were skeptical moving forward after something so great as the original saw, Darren Lynn Boozman was tasked with making a sequel. Mm-hmm. And I thought he did a really great job. And I go back and watch two to four, and I think still think he did a really great job yeah and i am so glad he was brought into direct spiral yeah absolutely and it's it it um even even for him gets a different um different take on it because it has more it has a more uh it has a different vibe it has a very different vibe than all the saw films yeah and that i think that's what i liked about it is like it it worked within the realm of being from the book of saw but had its own pace and its own feel. Yep. You and saw a picture of John Kramer, mm-hmm. and that's it. That's, 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 that's it. all you get. That's it. He, he, inspired, he inspired the killer in this one who wears a pig mask. Mm-hmm. And, uh, 
you know, because they're going after cops. Yeah, and that that was the only thing for me was a bit of a detractor is it just seemed like, you know, Hollywood right now, especially the way they're, you know, acting towards police, just police in general. For sure. Across the nation. Um, I, I didn't. Uh, that's one thing I didn't really appreciate because it's like, okay, so now it's like, now we're taking out all the dirty cops and, and I get it. And that that's it to tell a story like this. It had to be. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it, I thought it, it was a little heavy handed, mm-hmm. but uh, I understand. Yeah. They didn't their, go there though. Mm-hmm. Do you notice? Like, I mean, it was kind of like, that. I think they were going for more of a, uh, even though like all the backdrop was mostly Philly. Like, yeah, you know, the, yeah. the city was metro, like it was the metro police. Like, <laughs> right, right. Um, <laughs> F- fictional. To yeah, I think they're going department. more for like New York in the 70s or 80s, where it's just like, you know, the police were given carte blanche to, yeah, you know, be judge, jury, and executioner. And spoiler, that that's that's where this whole story goes. Yes. It's it, we're going through this police force uh, and the detective unit specifically. Chris Rock is our lead detective. And his partner is played by, is it Matthew uh, Mingala, Mingala? Do you know him? I do. I'm, I'm going to get all the cast and crew pulled up I right do, now. I do, because he is, he's uh, one of the main figures on in uh, the Hulu, hit Hulu show, The Handmaid's Tale. Oh, okay. I've still yet to see that. I hear it's awesome. He, he is uh, probably my favorite character in it. Oh. So, like, when I saw him in it, too, I was just like, oh, yeah. Uh, like I'm in. Is that him? That yeah, Max. Okay, Max Mingella. Yeah. Oh, great job, he's, Max. He's been in a few. He's been in a few things. Mm-hmm. Like once you like see his face, you'll, you'll be like, oh yeah, there he is. But uh, big starring role for him in The Handmaid's Tale. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah. so he plays Chris Rock's sidekick, his new sidekick, mm-hmm. assigned by ready for this Marisol Nichols, who plays the chief, the police chief, Angie. <laughs> <laughs> right? This is, uh, she was Audrey in Vegas Vacation. She was on 24 yeah. as one of the CTU members. And she makes, I, I honestly, one of, one of the starring roles. Yeah, she was Captain Angie Garza um, yeah. of the department. So you got our chief, Angie. You got Chris Rock, our lead detective, Max Minghella, who is uh, Detective William Shank. And uh, Chris Rock, by the way, Detective Zeke Banks. But all, and a, oh, sorry. And a, sorry. And a bunch of more stereotypical looking cops <laughs> yeah, right, surrounding right. them to fill out but yeah you have these young younger beautiful people and then the typical uh this you guy 40 yeah. something white man <laughs> right he's seen enough but marcus banks chris rock's dad and that's actually not a huge spoiler we know that pretty early he's this legendary captain police chief someone that Mm-hmm. It, back in, I think it was Article 8 or Article 9 is what they referred to. Yeah, as, they're calling it Article 8. So Article 8, so he was like the man that cracked down on all the crime throughout the city, this Philadelphia, even though you you and yeah, I know this. Metro. The, metro. <laughs> so uh, he, he's the one who I guess would be that um, like Frank Rizzo figure type, mm-hmm. if we're going to liken it to Philadelphia and like crack down on all the crime. And, and a lot of these people yeah. worked under him and allowed him to do this and actually did his work. So he's he's the head yeah, so, like so, he's a retired uh, police chief. Yep. And um, you know the thing with Chris Rock in the police department is that he turned in his partner, who shot a witness as part of a cover up, and so he has the label of being a snitch. Uh, nobody really trusts him. Like, and the first kill is someone who he was friendly with, like one of the few in the department that he was still friendly with. Yeah. Uh, I've watched that opening scene because uh, Lionsgate released it on YouTube before it came out. I've watched it probably about four or five times. Wow. Lionsgate's good with that. They really are because yeah. like, if you want a really good feel for how it, that's the first four minutes. Yep. And, um, yeah. Unlike jigsaw, it's like, you know, he says like, Oh, you'll survive. No, you're not. No, like there's, he has no intention of you living. And honestly, that's one of the detractors is if we're going to copycat Jigsaw and we're going to show a picture of John Kramer and it's a book of Saul, there really wasn't a way out for these people. Uh, No, (laughs) except for the one, which was a really fucking cool device. But we'll get we'll get there as we go. Sure. 
I mean, we're not going to do the full like no. synopsis of the movie, but either way. So like the first, the first machine with the guy's tongue, you know, I don't think, you know, you're going to bleed out. <laughs> I don't know how he gets down and then gets away from the train. Yeah. It's not happening. Especially with, if you saw, so he has to pretty much either but like use that device to cut his tongue off or he just lets go and no, hangs. The weight, your own weight will to rip the tongue from, you know, the head you yeah. lie. So so you saw how the tongue was displayed. Yeah. If it pulled out the way it did, he wasn't going to make that. He wasn't going to make it out. No, and I think because that it was also like with the amount of blood and everything, it was like implying that it was like kind of like pre-cut. All you had to do was well, you just had to jump and it would rip clean off and it did. Yeah. Um, but he was a little too late. Yeah. You know, it's there this one, the difference with this killer is you had maybe a minute to act and then you're done. Like he wasn't playing around. No. And that's fine because he's not the actual jigsaw. He's his own thing that they don't really give a name to other than like the pig. Um, I mean, not, I mean, oh man, I'm, I'm trying not to get ahead of myself, but there's just so many things that I just want to be like, wow. Yeah. So, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just, I'm just going to tell you my big wow moment. That, keep it, keep it rolling, man. That I was just like, we want to talk about like devices was the 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 final one Samuel L. Jackson Samuel L. Jackson's yeah so you know guys if you listen let's hope you've seen Spiral yeah here we go yeah maybe we won't spoil everything but we're talking about the movie Spiral so mm-hmm. so the premonition to that device I didn't even think about it neither did I and Me- then when he did it I was just like yo <laughs> yeah because we already alluded to like that Sam Jackson, when he was the police chief, he was mm-hmm. the one pulling the strings behind the corruption. Yes. And I say pulling the strings because they say it in one of the videos with the little pig puppet and it has a gun and the arm goes up and it starts like waving. Yep. And then he's strung up and you're like, don't come in, don't go in. And then <laughs> just once it started moving and they're just like, what the f-? And then once his exactly as the puppet and like pulls the strings. I was like, yeah. Ooh, that was very clever. And that that probably surprised me more than like you know as anything out of what, what you would call the book of Saul would have a twist though I think I I actually predicted that in my head that he was that that was going to be the final uh, yeah who the killer was that I figured oh okay that I figured out when um when they showed the skin tattoo okay and you know what maybe we don't give that one away even though we just gave away. What j- just because no, we'll, leave, we'll leave it alone. L- l- let's leave that one alone. Um, just because when it happens, it's pretty emotional when very, w- you know, thinking of Chris Rock as the lead character yeah. and the people around him, someone yeah. who was close to him, it, uh, that payoff was like, Oh wow. Okay. We, we took a moment to kind of have some, some weight. Yeah. No, it's, that's fair. Yeah. It's more than fair. Um, but it's, you know, Still, I mean, this dude is not, it's, he's not the same kind of killer. So it's not like it is like Jigsaw in, he's inspired by Jigsaw to punish dirty cops. Yes. He has no intentions of helping people better their lives. He just <laughs> wants to punish and torture dirty cops. Um, so, I mean, that's a huge difference in comparison. He has no intention to help people. No. No, he doesn't want them to be grateful for their life. No. He just wants to torture them. and He wants them to feel the worst they've ever felt for the horrible things they've done. And with this film's traps, uh, he succeeds. He certainly does. (laughs) He certainly does. I mean, there wasn't a one where, like, I'm torn between what my actual, like, favorite device was in it, though. Hmm. So, I mean, it comes down to, I mean, the first one is just, like, it's, well, welcome it, back. Yeah, it's like here we go. <laughs> but I mean, the final one, obviously, with the you know the way it's foreshadowed. But the one where you had to bite down, that was good too. Yes, is that the guy that gets electrocuted? Yeah. Okay, I didn't fully understand that. Um, how that one worked yeah so like when he bit down what was going to happen so you saw he at each of his fingers was in like uh uh was it like a mesh mesh? type it's like a metal mesh so like a cage Mm -hmm. kind of thing 
And the reason for that, like you see like how it was wrapped is from pulling, it was going to rip his fingers out of his hand. Yes. And that much I got. And in the, he's in a tub and the tub is filling up with water and there is a, you know, live electric wire Mm -hmm. right there. So it's like, you have to bite down and then that'll activate the machine. That's going to pull the wires forward. That will then remove your fingers. Okay. So he's the one, what was his was like, you pulled the trigger and like, not only that, he made him watch. So like this cop, he killed a guy at like a traffic stop. The guy gave him the finger. So he just shot him. And cold right. blood and it was on like a dash cam so like the you know the guy you know makes him watch the dash cam footage and be like you pulled the trigger it's like now you have no fingers and that's the only way you get to live so he had to bite down in order to keep his fingers coming off yeah he had to keep biting down to get them all off and then he would have been released he could have gotten out of the tub okay he wouldn't have made it out of the tub again he would have had to have like the way that these <laughs> machines are he would have had to have as soon as it said this is what you need to do you have to do it right away. Right. You don't get time to think, which is a very standard like uh, theme in Saw movies where it does that like quick back and forth. Like, <laughs> yeah, like that shaky. Yeah, the shaky uh, camera goes here, 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 here. Right. It's like, ah, you know, that <laughs> that moment of stress thought that it's trying to bring you to. It's like, no, no, no. You you, you got to do this right, right now yes. or you're done. Yeah, it's not going to walk the viewer through what the person has to do. It's just like, nope, you, that green light turns on, and I think that was consistent all throughout. Mm-hmm. A green light turns on, and the trap's begun. Yeah, it's like, this is it. Here's the deal. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, the Shards of Glass oh. was pretty pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, that was... Uh, ooh. And I mean, it couldn't have happened to a better character. Yeah. But... The shards of glass. When Chris Rock, the lead detective, when he looks and realizes what is is going to happen, he he's, I think that's the audience's reaction as well. <laughs> yeah, because you don't know. No, <laughs> you're like what? You're like uh, okay, like what's going on? <laughs> and it's like ooh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's pretty brutal. Yeah, it's pretty. So by the end of that whole ordeal, I actually, even though this person was a really bad person that it happened to, I I was feeling like, all right, well, that's that's pretty intense. Like, I I, I don't know if I feel bad or good. Like, this is bad. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that really captured how how it worked for Chris Rock's character. Like you, you, you definitely felt it from that scene, like Mm -hmm. from his perspective, Um because you know as we mentioned he put a dirty cop away yep so you know he gets the option to either save him or watch him get absolutely (laughs) ripped to shreds glass to death yeah (laughs) Um, yikes but you know what else was fun with this one for you know uh the way i mean like jigsaw kind of did it but this guy he does more stuff with like all those packages Mm -hmm. that was fun Okay, like so a kinda, lot of the riddles and packages, and yeah, the story unfolding through th- this method. So, yeah. it, so Chris Rock receives a package. He plays the the USB drive, not the tape in this one. Right, plays the USB drive. That's a clue. He goes to the clue, and then there's another box. Yep. Yeah. So you like that? I did like that. Yeah, I like that. They like sent them on a uh, a little bit of like you know a little wild goose chase, you know, and. If you're into riddles, I mean, you know, they caught me off guard. By the end, I was starting to think about them. But <laughs> the the only thing I did think it was a little too easy to get each of these cops, uh, like just like okay, here we go, boom, they're captured. You know, it's like okay, so we have like people that are trained with firearms, like everybody. Yeah, I mean, the first one definitely. I mean, that definitely worked. Yes. Um. That one makes sense. Um, bu- 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 the one with the wax, that makes sense because he used, he stole the phone. Or no. He did steal the phone. That actually, he he had a hunch about something in a case file in the cold cases. Yeah. So he, the my takeaway was Chris Rock sent uh, her down to the cold case room unknowing yeah 
That that's what I took away. Uh, now if we watch it again, oh, damn dude, that makes it even better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he. Uh, that makes it even. Oh my god. Yep. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even gonna repeat the riddle. No, you remember the damn riddle? Uh, it was like when you're waiting for more bodies to fall, I'm going to take your head. Wow, that's a good memory. I was into it. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I was into it. I was, I was, I was feeling it. Okay, and that was, that was another, uh, another gruesome death. They, they definitely brought back the traps that were. It didn't get as wild and crazy as the Saw films that kept moving along. Um, tended to do yeah for the most part they're pretty basic they were and uh it will gross you out yeah (laughs) yeah and um yeah it's it's definitely going to do that if i i could see someone who is a uh diehard saw fan maybe not liking it i don't know why you wouldn't because the movie itself the story is really good i mean i i like Pretty much everything about it, but I could see someone who wants to be like, nah, just trying too hard. But it's like, I don't know. They tried to do, you know what it was? Because I didn't get to talk about this. I didn't watch it when we were doing the Saw episodes was when after my, how I felt after I watched Jigsaw. Okay. Yeah. Actually, you've been referencing Jigsaw a lot, and I don't remember that being the, like, I don't remember you talking about it that much during those episodes. I did it because I I wasn't able to watch it in time, and... Um, what, what, how that one works, like where it's like, there was finally like enough space between doing movies yeah. where, um, that tried to have a different tone, but still had the same feel as like all the, all the sequels. Yeah. You know, clever, really good. So like I could see like that and this, I mean, I liked a lot. Um, but like that, where that one failed is that it was it was supposed to be like a prequel and all they did was just make the machines a little more primitive. Hmm. But, and like in this, I mean, it just, it, the machines were pretty primitive and like, he's sloppy. Like he's not, he's nothing like him. And it, it definitely sets its own tone. That's, that's, that's my big takeaway. Yeah. He's a different quote unquote killer. Like th- that's what I'm trying to say is like what that jigsaw movie was trying to do with setting a different tone. Mm-hmm. This one actually does. Yes. Yes. That's, okay. that's where I'm at. I like that. I mean, did you, I mean, do you remember it? A jigsaw, I can't remember that well. I I was still of the, I didn't really get excited about the Saw movies until we started talking about them again with the, you yeah. and Dave. So I tried to go back and watch everything, but I wasn't able to, I, I got as far as three to rewatching all of them. Yeah, I mean... You know, I mean, you you know most. So I would I would say just jump right to Jigsaw. Oh, okay. Jump right to J- yes, because you know what? I didn't see it. Yeah. I haven't seen Jigsaw since it's come out. Yeah, I mean, you've watched, I mean, you can watch all of them at any time. But I'd say like after this, I'm like, I think the first one, this and Jigsaw, would probably be like my top three. Wow. Okay. I actually like really enjoyed them. Hmm. First, so 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 for you, it's <laughs> Saw one, Spiral, and Jigsaw. Yeah, but I guess this doesn't really, it doesn't count towards that, does it? We'll see. I mean, there might be more. Oh, I think after the success of this, uh, there will definitely be more, although the critics did not. No, I saw like that. It. I saw like uh, whoever runs RogerEbert.com or whatever. Like oh, they, yeah. They hate everything that's not dumb. I don't know. They like <laughs> dumb stuff. Yeah, 37% on Rotten Tomatoes, 39% at Metacritic, 6 out of 10 on IMDb. I haven't read any of those reviews on purpose right. because I wanted. I, I don't like being influenced by that. We, we have too much information. Mm-hmm. This was our first, and, and it was great to be back in the theater. This was the first film out of quarantine that we saw in the theater. Yes. So I didn't want to know anything about it past the two trailers that we watched. Yeah, and, you know. We, we accomplished that. Mm-hmm. And, and I think, for me, it's above 6 out of 10 on IMDb, 37% on Rotten Tomatoes, 39% on Metacritic. I think it's way better than that. It's definitely way better than that. <laughs> I think uh, as the, I think on Rotten Tomatoes, as this progresses, the critic score will probably stay low, but I think the audience score will go up. Yeah. But I didn't even say that. It's just the critic score on there. 
Uh, let me check. See if there's an audience score on there yet. Let, like, oh, yeah, dude. The audience is right in line. 76%. That's what I tell you. <laughs> so this is definitely a movie where I could see a someone who's a polished movie critic giving it a hard time because of basically what I said about like Chris Rock's character in the beginning. Um, the character definitely changes. Oh, oh about oh, halfway through. I think Chris Chris Rock and this isn't, you know, obviously movies are shot out of order. Chris Rock grows into the role as the movie goes. Yeah. At first it's like, oh, okay, Chris Rock's in the he's the lead guy. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, oh. Yeah. So I, I could see where like a critic might take issue with that. I could see where they might take issue with some of the the pacing. But other I mean, other it's a solid it's a solid movie. Yes, it is. So now you're saying Saw One, which I remember back in the day. You just absolutely loved. I don't know how anything could top. I still love it. Yeah, yeah. I I watched it for the first time in a long time. Yeah, as you know, I had it on uh, UMD for the PSP. So <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's been quite a while, uh, but I did watch Saw One again, and I, because it had been so long, I'm like, oh my gosh, I really forgot just how good this film was. So it's so good as a movie. Yes. And this one gets back to that one's feel of it doesn't have to lead to machine, 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 machine. Right. It's, you know, what the hell is going on? Unravel machine. What the hell is going on? Something's going on. Hint, clue, machine, like, you know, not. And punchline. Yeah. It's like, whoa. Um, so I do have to ask. Yeah. We, we just saw it. We're all excited. We were excited for Spiral going in. Mm-hmm. Uh, what makes it better than Jigsaw? Like, what 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 puts it right behind? Oh, wait. Actually, you already explained that. What what puts it right behind the first saw and in front of Jigsaw and then leaves the rest in the dust? I, honestly, it's the, it's the sto- having a unique story mm-hmm. altogether that I really, really enjoyed. Like... It's not a typical, like, dirty cop. Um, I'm, might be. I mean, no, it's not It's not a typical dirty cop. I think some of the characters some, are painted some, as typical, but not... Some of the characters, but the overall, I think the way they set up the killer and the way that they set up the entire story to unfold, I really enjoyed. Yeah. Okay. Um, whereas, you know, after after you get through the first... So you pretty much know how it's going to go. I mean, this one runs the same type of formula, but not as intense. Okay. So then we get to the ever important. I mean, it does. I, I can't say that. No. Uh, there's some intense moments. Yeah. Uh, the, the first one's pretty heavy. The first saw is pretty heavy with, with a conclusion that's just draw, jaw dropping. And I'm not saying the twist. Of Saw, I'm saying like what has to the guy has to cut his freaking foot off. It's absolutely incredible, and it makes it make, like my heart sinks every time he closes that door. Right, right, exactly. The keys in the bathtub, <laughs> and that's hearing that theme for the first time. So, mm-hmm. so the ever important boat score. You got zero to five, no halves for Red River Horror. Correct, and you know because I mean this is a shame because we really haven't established what is a five out of five. So I mean this is going to have to stay a four out of five. Okay, that's that's a very very strong st- score. It is, and I think if it, very early on into RedRiverHorror.com, I did explain the review system because I actually had a few filmmaker friends that you know I started review- reviewing their movies, and they're just like, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, and I said, no, 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 this this isn't bad, and they're like, well, you got to explain the rating system then. So, yeah, uh, I I go by this. For me, a zero is thanks killing. If you've ever seen that, uh, no, I, I, I don't. If it, I don't plan on it. It's it's awful. The Ring Two would be my starter for a zero. Okay, so for me, the Ring Two would probably be a one. Holy, sh- that bad is uh this thanks killing. Thanks killing's terrible. Okay, yes. Well, I mean, the title kind of gives it away. That's not good. Yeah, but a five, a five would be Psycho. Okay. Yeah, it has to be like that. It has to be perfection. Yeah, like a five would be um, the yeah. shining, probably uh, among. Yeah. People. Like it. It has to be. Yeah, I mean, and that's a shame because just in the sense where it's like, I feel like that teacher is just like, well, I don't give A's or A pluses or something like that. 
Well, there were there were you know. many in the horror community, um, and I tried to get them to write for Red River Horror. It's just people in Hollywood are busy, right? Absolutely, yeah. Like they're, they're working on projects, and even if they're not, they're trying to get more projects. So I tried to get some pretty talented horror people involved in the site. Stacy. Stay, well, of course, Stacy's the best. <laughs> <laughs> She's the lead. Yeah. Um, but this was back in 2017, and back then there were at least three, I can tell you, three high-quality Hollywood-level people that would have given Get Out a five. So that's the most recent one that people say Get Out is would be a five out of five boats. For okay. me, for me, so that f- four. It, it's a strong film, yeah. Yeah. Oh, for you, you. I mean, you you would say it's a five? No. Okay, no, no, I, I wouldn't say so. it was a five. Like, I wouldn't even say one of my more recent favorites, Sinister, It Follows, they're not fives. So here, here's what I'm thinking about, like, when you first brought it to me. I mean, a zero is I couldn't finish watching it or I would never watch it again when, or I just, like, just hated it so much. Uh, a yeah. one means I, you know, was able to sit there and I just generally didn't like it like some well, someone else might like it but i definitely would have no intentions on ever ever watching it again yep and you know i guess two is the same thing except i would give it another chance maybe yeah and and two it, it, like it was competently made there is somebody yeah. else out there that would watch it and like i am sure i am sure the community would give blair witch two a two for me that's a three that's fair yeah yeah i think three three for me is like i i liked it i would watch it um i would watch it again if someone was just like hey you want to watch this to be like yeah absolutely and where where i'm saying when i'm saying fours like this is i'm going to personally go out of my way to watch this uh probably multiple times yeah like it could end up in my regular uh I guess I, you know. I guess your digital collection. Your yeah, digital like my box. my regular rotation of being like, oh yeah, like I like to watch this movie every now and then. Okay, I like that. Yeah, and just to be clear, I think I did explain it on Red River Horror Podcast before, but if I hadn't, or if it was a long, long time ago, Stacy Lane Wilson is a credentialed movie critic. She is. Um, you know, she's the real deal. So when she reviews something, and she gave Halloween twenty eighteen a five out of five. Really? Yeah. So, so, but the thing is, that fits her. That fits her style, though. Yeah. So I picked that up. Well, I can't. So, I am not a credentialed movie critic. So, therefore, I am not telling Stacy what to give films. She's a critic. She says it's a five. Then nobody argues. If no. you or I, or you know, Joe D'Angelo from Different Take, he does some writing. I think did maybe a few reviews. Yeah. If anybody else on Red River Horror writes a review for a film and they say it's a five out of five, everybody that's ever contributed to RedRiverHorror.com has to agree. Fair. You know? Yeah. Because cause we, have to, we have to know. Mm-hmm. Is it really the strength of what was Get Out in 2017? Yeah. What's The Exorcist? What's The Shining? The, you know. I gotta lie. I mean, if we're talking like Jordan Peele movies, I liked Us better than Get Out. So did I. I like Dust better than Get Out as well. I, that one genuinely scared me. Us was really good. Yeah. Like, that was scary. So for me... Get Out, I mean, I guess if I was black, I'd feel different about it. But Get Out's a really good movie. It, it's a great movie. Uh, don't get me wrong about that. But, you know, it's kind of predictable and, you know, gets a little silly. Yeah, and I think people but, people think people think that Get Out was so original and and everything everything in I think Daniel Farron said this to us in one of our yeah. previous episodes. Everything is grifted from other things. So I think that people liked Get Out so much. I mean, we're, we're it talking wasn't about just Invasion of the Body Snatchers, like, kind of revisited, pr- like kind of pretty much worked, worked around. That's what I picked up on. But it's an Academy Award winner. So <laughs> what the hell do we know? <laughs> but I liked uh, us better. I, I liked Us better as well. That movie, I actually have that on DVD or on uh, Blu-ray. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, but I can't, I can't recommend Spiral enough. Uh, I I can't say I I I don't have a bad thing to say about it. Okay. How about you? 
Uh, I would go three boats out of five. Three boats. Yeah. Okay. So what 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 turns you off? I think that it was pretty easy to go after dirty cops right now, mm-hmm. especially for like, of course, you know, th- these people making these films are pretty privileged. They're pretty well well to do yeah but isn't like the whole salt like when we were talking about like the Saul series i was just like yeah you know cop like they're all basic they're all cop movies the the first one for me definitely yeah like yes i know the rest has what is it rig going around and yeah and but the, i mean the first one's cl- it's it's like seven where it is a cop first movie and yep. then killer second where the other one the killer is more of the main character yeah um so i thought i thought that was easy to go after that was easy to kind of make okay like the pig mask, the pig puppet. And it's like, all right, fine. Um, so I thought that was a bit of an easy avenue. And the motive. Yes. Yeah. Um, the fact that you couldn't really escape, I, I, I thought I thought that could have... I, I would, would, wouldn't you have liked to see at least one person try? And... You know, I... I was thinking about that before we before we saw it, and um, I was I was like, man, there's always like somebody who finds a way to get out or something. Like, if it's like, let's just everybody die. Yeah. So you like that? <laughs> like the fact yeah. that just yeah, you know what? Because I don't think I mean you know where my my beef with the original series as a whole was I mean I loved that Amanda scene so much in the yes. first one that it takes away from it bringing her back. Right. Um, so we don't even get that with this. They're, yeah. they're <laughs> it, the ending's just like, shit. Yeah. But good. Like, but for, for strong me, finish. For me to move on to a four is tough. Okay. It's very, very tough. Like, that would have to be something that I ran out of the theater. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I need to. I, 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 I totally, like, I need to buy this tomorrow. I need to pre-order it. It's <laughs> like me, which is like, I can't wait to watch it again. Yeah. I, I will watch it again during the Halloween season just because it, it fits that season well. Yeah. Well, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to pick it apart. That's how much, like, there's a lot, like, um, Dave, when Dave Sullivan was on, like, he's the one who turned me around more to, like, the Saw movies because he's like, you got to pick up on the little pieces. And it's like, okay. I mean, obviously, you know, jigsaw pieces. Blah, 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 blah. So um, this one does it, you know, slightly different, but I just really liked how yeah. it was done. For, for your reference, like, Saw... 2004 is a four out of five. That's that's a four out of five film for me. Okay. So Spiral does not equal Saw in my book. Okay. I liked it a lot though. I mean, like that. That's the first one's one that I would kind of push towards. It's like a five. Mm-hmm. But I I could see anybody. I I could see anybody our age. Yeah. And and older, slightly younger. If that was a five for them, I totally get it. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I I love that movie. <laughs> they they don't make them like that anymore, until now. But until now, yeah, so so good. But yeah, I, I enjoyed great. Spiral a lot. It was a great first film back in the theater. Mm-hmm. I will definitely watch it again before twenty twenty one concludes. I loved. I, I ultimately loved Chris Rock in this role. I, I he just stood out to me. I mean, think about. He carried the, he carried the show like you yeah. know as being the lead he he did a great job carrying the entire movie. Yep, and thank you one of the executive producers of this as well. Yeah. Spiral. So bang. Three. I mean, I think I know he was you know part of the, like bringing it back. So I don't know if he was trying to like jump on like the Jordan Peele train, but it's like yeah, you know whatever, man. Yeah, go for it. You don't have to make these big cerebral, uh, uh, you know, really have to kind of move things around and all that stuff. It's like, let's just make no. a good freaking saw type film. No. And here's the thing. Like if they do go for the sequel, I mean, hopefully they, you know, try and be, you know, as creative as possible and not follow the same formula, take it on its own path. Yeah. I hope we don't get the spiral two in one year because for any horror movie, the one year sequel is tough. I will say that saw two, Upon seeing it the first time, I thought it was done really well. Yeah. Saw part two. Uh, but I think they actually even they even started working on it before the first one was released, right? Just in, That would make sense. Just in case. That and would make they, sense. Then they got into a schedule just to see how... Yeah. 
hey, I mean, it worked out. You know, when you, you catch fire, you got to keep it lit. So mm-hmm. you know, yep. I can't blame them. Just doesn't mean I have to be like, oh, it's the greatest thing. No, <laughs> I don't. No. But, but uh, yeah, Spiral for me, three out of five boats. I loved it. It was great to be back at the theater. Great to be chatting with you, the Red River Horror listeners, about it. Uh, I had a lot of fun, Joe. Me too, Ed. So we're going to wrap this wrap this puppy up. Mm-hmm. So, of course, like I said, four out of five. You said three out of five. So definitely check out Spiral from the Book of Saul. Uh, if you have already, let us know what you think by tweeting at Red River Horror or at Red River Joe. Shoot us an email for episode suggestions or thoughts, opinions, whatever. We'll read it right on here. Don't matter. And that's redriverhorror at gmail.com. Yeah, we should add a mailbag segment. We should do some segments. We should. I mean, we're yeah. coming up on that one year. So I think at that one year, it's time to make some changes. But there's you know a lot going on in our personal lives that are kind of... <laughs> slowed a lot of things down but we are you know the plans are there Cheryl you know and I guess I guess the next thing that we might be going after is some of the uh, the Conjuring universe yeah which we should yeah which we should there's 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 a lot there a ton (laughs) (laughs) a ton of it so I mean that's all I've got anything else Ed nope again redriverhorror at gmail.com at river red river horror on Instagram and Twitter, I'm Eddie Cayazzo. And I am Joe Zakreski. Find me at Red River Joe on Twitter. And remember to keep traveling those channels of fear. <laughs>